Hi, everyone. I'm glad to present our work, MedFS, Profile Virtualization for User-Space Persistent Memory File Systems. I'm Sean. This work is in collaboration with Chen Hao, Guanzhou, and Su Yan, and is advised by Andrea, Ramsey, and Mike. Persistent memory is a promising candidate for next-generation storage device with its fast sub-microsecond latency, which means that the, storage over, uh, the software overhead now becomes significant. It's byte addressable and can be directly accessed via CPU load and store instructions, possibly from the user space. It's also non-volatile that retains data without power, so we need to take care of crash consistency. For this novel storage device, many new file systems have been built. One straightforward design is the kernel file system shown on the left. At the top is the application that communicates with the kernel file system using the usual system call interface. The kernel file system then access the persistent memory device via load and store instructions. In this design, the kernel file system manages both data and metadata, which turn out to be inefficient. For example, in ext4dex, an apprent operation incurs the system call overhead to trap into the kernel. The VFS overhead, such as inode locking, and inefficient metadata journaling in the granularity of four kilobytes block, causing high write amplification. As a result, for four KB append, ext 4 dex is seven times slower than the device bandwidth. To address this issue, many user space file systems have been proposed to bypass the kernel for data operations. They memory map the file data on, on, on open, so that subsequent read and write can be handled directly in user space via CPU load and store instructions. However, for most uh, user space file systems, metadata are still managed by the kernel. This is, again, inefficient, since many, many data operations are coupled with metadata updates. For example, let's take a look at append followed by sync in a, in a prior work, SpiritFS. On the left, the target file to append already have a block A mapped to some block stored on the persistent memory. And SpiritFS introduced the notion of pre-allocated staging file so that append can be handled in user space. To append the block B, SpiritFS just needs to write the data directly to this pre-allocated file. But, the, but, but the appended data is not visible to other processes until an f-sync that remaps the data from the pre-allocated file to the target file for visibility. This requires updating the block map for the two files and also changing the memory map since we are doing memory mapped I.O. and the memory map follows the block map. The kernel metadata operation is, is expensive. Updating the block map uh, needs to go through the kernel I.O. stack with inefficient metadata journaling and changing the page table involves page fault and TLB shootdown. As a side note here, block map updates is also not friendly to huge pages since it may break contiguous blocks. As a result, for 4KB append with f-sync, splitfs turns out to have worse performance compared to the underlying kernel file system, ext4dex. Now we know that it is expensive to modify kernel management metadata. So can we just manage all, the, all metadata in user space as well? The answer is unfortunately no, since applications are untrusted. For example, a malicious user may change the permission of a file to gain unauthorized access. Now let's take a one step back. So how about just managing the metadata that are coupled with data operations? Surprisingly, the answer is yes. And one key observation we have is that some uh, file metadata, such as the file size and block map, share the same protection domain as the file data. Therefore, we can embed these metadata into file data to efficiently manage them in user space without sacrificing security. So what do I mean by sharing the same protection domain? Let's take block map as an example. If a user have a permission to swap two block pointers within a file, then it can cause other users to read incorrect data. 
However, the same can be achieved if the user already have the permission to modify the data. In that case, user, the user can just directly overwrite two blocks with a swapped content. Therefore, we say that the block map is in the same protection domain as the data. With this observation, we propose to embed metadata meta into file data, especially for those that are coupled with data operations. This allows efficient metadata management in user space without kernel involvement. It also provides the equivalent security guarantee because in order to modify the embedded metadata, the user needs to first have access to the permission for the file data. Based on metadata embedding, we propose MetaFS, Metadata Embedded File System. It is a user space library file system designed for persistent memory. The figure on the right shows the architecture. MetaFS sits in the middle of a POSIX application and an unmodified kernel file system, such as ext4dex. MetaFS uses memory mapped I.O. to serve data operations and most metadata operations in user space. MetaFS also provides strong data crash consistency using copy on write. Here's a simplified design of MetaFS to illustrate the point of metadata embedding. On the left, we have file slash foo. The first block of this file stores embedded metadata, and the rest stores data blocks, some of which are pre allocated and currently unused. We denote the blocks stored on the underlying kernel file system as logical blocks. Here, all the blocks on the, shown on the left are logical blocks. We introduce a layer of, of indirection and define the blocks seen by the application as virtual blocks. In the example below, we have three virtual blocks, A, B, and C. They are mapped to logical blocks, four, two, and three, stored within the file. This mapping is maintained in the embedded block map. The other embedded metadata includes bitmap, which indicates whether a logical block is in use or not, and the virtual file size, which is the size seen by the application. Now let's take a look at how write works in this simplified design of MetaFS. Here we want to write this six kilobytes of buffer to the middle of block C, which involves copy on write for virtual block three and append for virtual block four. We would first allocate two logical blocks from the embedded bitmap by marking the bits for logical blocks five and six. And then copy the buffer to the newly allocated blocks. We also need to copy the first two, two kilobytes of block C since we are doing copy on write for strong data crash consistency. We then update the block map. Here, the virtual block V3 is not mapped to logical block L5, and we added a new entry to map V4 to L6. We also need to update the virtual file set as well. And now the application can see this newly database data at this point. And finally, we need to deallocate the old blocks. In this example, copy on write and append are both data operations that requires metadata updates. With metadata embedding, we can do them efficiently in user space without kernel updating inode or changing the page table. To summarize metadata management in MetaFS, the embedded metadata includes the mapping between the virtual and the logical blocks, the virtual si file size seen by the application, and the bitmap for logical blocks. This allows for efficient data operations, including those coupled with the metadata updates without expensive kernel involvement. The kernel manages the usual mapping between logical and physical blocks, the logical file size, and the bitmap for physical blocks. They are updated infrequently on pre-allocation where the user space file system run out of logical blocks. We do pre-allocation in two megabytes granularity, which is friendly to huge pages. The file permission is still managed by the kernel and enforced during file open. Overall, the kernel only needs to provide cross grain allocation and protection, similar to the exokernel architecture. So far, we have covered the simplified design for MetaFS to illustrate the point of metadata embedding. In the full design, we introduced profile virtualization, where our user space virtualization layer 
MetaFS, in this case, implements a complete set of f f file functionalities, including metadata management, which we just talked about, crash consistency for both data and metadata, and concurrency control on a profile basis. The goal of profile virtualization is to push these file functionalities into the user space as much as possible. For metadata crash consistency, we organize the metadata updates as a log with compact eight-byte log entries. Following the previous example, instead of directly overwriting metadata in place, we append a log entry that describes the virtual blocks three to four are mapped to logical blocks five to six. The, logical entries, lo the log entries are grouped into log blocks stored within the file. This eight-byte design of log entry ensures the atomicity of metadata updates and also makes it possible for a design of log-free optimistic concurrency control. Writers use this compare and swap to commit log entries and linearize uh, concurrent metadata updates. Unlike log-based concurrency control, which had the issue of log owner crashes blocking other uh, processes, our log-free OCC is safe in the, process, uh, in the presence of process failures as the crash of one process would not prevent others from making progress. Our log-free OCC offer, uh, also offers better scalability since it, allow, it, it allows data operations to be performed concurrently, even with overlapping ranges. To avoid the metadata log from going indefinitely, we implemented a non-blocking garbage collection with read copy update, or RCU, to construct a new log and then atomically swap the pointer to the log head to point to the new one. This design has little impact on the tail latency. Due to time constraints, we cannot cover the full uh, design in details. Please refer to the paper if you are interested. For evaluation, we'd like to answer the following questions. First, how does MetaFS perform on microbenchmarks? And second, how, how MetaFS performs on real-world applications? We run MetaFS on top of ext 4 dax and compare it with ext 4 dax a traditional kernel file system, Nova, a kernel file system designed for persistent memory, and SpaceFS, a user space persistent memory file system that manages the metadata with a modified version of ext 4 dax To answer the first question, we perform concurrent 4KB random read on a single file. In this figure, the x-axis shows the number of threads and the y-axis shows the throughput in gigabytes per second. MetaFS has the best overall performance. With a single thread, with single thread MetaFS is 47% faster than ex 4 dex and 41% faster than Nova. In this workload, all file systems scales pretty well since there's no writes and thus no metadata updates. For concurrent random overrides on a single file, MetaFS does not update any kernel file or metadata and handles this workload completely in user space. MetaFS saturates the device bandwidth with just a single thread. It's 26% faster than SpaceFS and 70% faster than underlying kernel file system, ext 4 dax And MetaFS sustains high throughput with more threads thanks to the efficient design of our log-free optimistic concurrency control. For macro-benchmark, we run TPCC, a transaction processing benchmark on a relational database, SQLite. For this workload, SQLite issues many block-aligned writes followed by async. In the figure below, the x-axis shows five transaction types in TPCC with a mixed column, which is a weighted average of all transactions. The y-axis shows the throughput. The result shows that MetaFS outperforms all, all, all the file systems on all, all transaction types. For the mixed workload, it's 26% faster than SpaceFS and 58% faster compared to ext 4 dax We have done many other experiments and please refer for, to our paper for more details. In summary, user space file system bypasses a kernel for data operations but still relies on it for metadata management. However, many data operations are coupled with metadata updates which still involves the expensive kernel I.O. stack. We propose metadata embedding to embed metadata that are coupled with data operations into file data for efficient user space management. 
we introduced profile virtualization, where our user space virtualization layer implements a full set of file functionalities, including metadata management, crash consistency, and concurrency control on a profile basis. Finally, we implement MADFS, a highly scalable user space persistent memory file system that supports uh, strong crash data crash consistency. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. <laughs>